fight in the submarine, I want to show you this uh, clip. There's a CGI, you know, rendition of, of what happened to this submarine. And it it's rather shocking. I'd like to show it to everyone where you just see how fast this thing imploded. So that's the actual submarine. Boom. That's how fast the implosion was. And here's a similar one on, on another, uh, like, Navy submarine. It just shows you how fast this implosion happens, which is insane. I guess there was a hull breach, and the air suddenly just pops out, leaving a vacuum, and it just sort of, you know, implodes on itself. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a scientist. Is that how it works? Yeah, well, it, it's kind of like uh, if you have a steam engine and you poke a hole in it, all the steam's lost. Same thing with something that has all the pressure on the outside. You poke a hole in it, it collapses. Does the air come out or does the water go in? Which way? The water, the everything just implodes on it because it's pressurized to hold out all of that. So the, oh, same, so the same way a plane's pressurized to hold it in because it wants to expand at higher altitudes, the deeper you go, the more pressure comes in on it. So it's going to implode on itself. Oh, so okay. before you even know what's going on, it just implodes and all you hear is a knock sound. But uh, well, I, yeah, and the guys inside don't hear anything because they they are like gone instantly. I heard someone yeah. talking it. They were talking about milliseconds, milliseconds of these guys. So at least you know the kind of uh, I I want to say I don't really want to say good thing, but at least these guys didn't feel it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they, the agony. Right, exactly. It, it's not like they initially thought they had like several days of like being totally scared with like losing oxygen. They just gone instantly, and you know. Yeah, well, James Cameron said, you know, right when you hear that sound and you you lost connection, he's like, they're they're gone. This guy plays around in submarines all the time. And, and he actually said he didn't want to go on this one because right. of the technology. He, he didn't want to go on it. He didn't want to, you know, there, there was issues with this specific sub that, you know, they had knocking sounds. And, you know, his response was, if you have a knocking sound on a submarine, you don't want to get at it. And so, but it's interesting to think about, like, this became the biggest news in America for the last five days, right? I wonder why. Well, it's actually, the Wall Street Journal reported that the U.S. Navy already knew about this on Sunday, that they had detected an explosion sound or an implosion sound in the sea on Sunday, and they did not release the news all week. Uh, because it covered up, there were several things going on this week. Hunter Biden pleading guilty to certain things. You had Durham in Congress, Durham testifying in Congress. I don't know if it, some of you might not know the Durham investigation. It was started by Trump's DOJ. Durham was testifying in Congress. A lot of things were happening that could potentially make the government look bad. So, you know, I'm not accusing anyone of your know, foul play with the submarine, but at least they held back the news. They knew that this sub had, had exploded or imploded on Sunday, the U.S. And, Navy. And, they, and they spent they spent the, the whole week talking about the headlines for 12 hours. Like, the whole world is talking about this submarine. Like, everybody, this mm. is the biggest news. Like, it might as well be the China spy balloon from February. Like It was an incredibly captivating story. I, I was reading every article about it because it was, it was like Apollo 13, you know? It was that level of, uh, of well, you know. One of the guys had been to space. He was a huge explorer, and there's a lot of money behind doing this stuff. Hamish Harding, he owns, he's worth net worth a billion dollars. Let's get into talking about this, guys. The net worth of all the people on there added together is about 2.8 billion. Uh, and we're going to go through all of them now. Hamish Harding is basically an explorer. He's a pilot, and he owns a aftermarket brokerage for jets that's based out of Dubai. And so his net worth is about a billion dollars. And he ha has been to the South Pole several times. He's been to space, Blue Origin. He's right. been Jeff to the Bezos is Yeah. Thing. And he's been to the Mariana Trench. You know, that the, the Mariana Trench. There's another Trench. thing. Sorry. The, the, there's yeah. one more thing that made me laugh reading his Wikipedia in that he did on the celebration of the anniversary of Apollo 11, he did a flight around the world from the North Pole to the South Pole and a circumnavigation, which took like 45 hours or something like a complete, excuse me, a complete circumnavigation of the earth for, uh, over the two poles. But <laughs> then you look at the plane and it's like a Gulfstream private jet. <laughs> that was quite yeah. funny. He's, he's the guy spent 46 hours in a private jet. I mean, yeah, and, and got a Guinness record for it. 
I, I just thought it was funny. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, this expedition and stuff. And it's like, oh, it's in a private jet. <laughs> yeah, right. It has a bed in the back. We watched TV for 45 hours. It was great. And then we landed. <laughs> we watched the whole day. season of uh, you yeah, know, Game exactly. of Thrones. <laughs> Did some binge watching, you know. But the interesting thing is the Mariana Trench is tw- three times as deep as the Titanic. Right. 36,000 feet. And he went um, to the Mariana Trench in another submersible dsv limiting factor that's the one yes dsv limiting factor so and that was done by a different company Uh, obviously also very scary if you have a look at the images of the dsv limiting factor it's like it's a two-person sub (laughs) it looks i would not get in that thing Um, i wouldn't wouldn't get in any of these things no way have a look at the photo of two people inside the i mean that's not him that's someone else but you can see it's a tiny little cabin. You got all oxygen tanks on the ceiling above you, and then you've got these three tiny holes to look out of. I would be absolutely. <laughs> I would never get in something like that. No, uh, not for twelve hours. That's for sure. Oh no, and that's good compared to the Ocean Gate Titan. I mean, this one was, yeah, run on a game controller and. Wow. That's crazy. So then the other guys that were in there were Shazada Daywood and Sul- Sulman Daywood. Right. So and Shazada then- is a 350 million net worth. He's a he's an Indian, uh, British Pakistani guy. Right. And they basically create fertilizer chemicals. He's a, he's a legacy person. His his grandfather created the company long ago to make fertilizers. Here's his page on the World Economic Forum. So some people were sharing this like, oh my God, it's a conspiracy. He was a World Economic Forum guy and he got kicked, killed off or something. But to be honest, there's a lot of people on the World Economic Forum's website. If you're a billionaire or something, yeah, chances are, you know, they sort of collect people. I heard some analysis about this the, the other day. It's sort of like they... They approach people and say, hey, would you like to be involved with this project? And then it's prestigious, so people accept and stuff like that. So just because he's on the World Economic Forum website, don't necessarily think that alone means something fishy. The most interesting guy on the ship, Stockton Rush, you know, his his wife has a very interesting background. And then on top of it, you know, he's a direct descendant of signers of the Declaration of Independence. Richard Stockton and Benjamin Rush. He went to Phillips Exeter Academy. Phillips Exeter is a private boarding school. It's a very prestigious background that he comes from. His grandfather, Davies, is involved with oil tycoons like Rockefeller. So ultimately, this just could have been a bunch of rich guys paying 250 grand to go travel around the uh, Titanic. The wealthiest one was Paul Henry Najerlet. They say 1.5 billion, some of the media are reporting 1.5 billion, but I don't know where this money comes from. That's so. what I was trying to figure out is wh- how did this guy make the money is because uh, all he's done for the last forever, he was in the Navy for France for 25 years. And then he did separate expeditions from like 1980 on into different parts of the ocean. And I'm like, well, 250 grand a ticket. If you're taking somebody every couple of weeks. There's just a lot of different things about this guy that are not clear. And like, how do you create $1.5 billion from being in the Navy? I mean, does he have DOD contracts? That could be it, maybe. Uh, But I mean, he he had been to the Titanic. Uh, He was Mr. Titanic, they called him, right? So he'd been to the wreck something like 30 times, I think he'd been down there. And so maybe, you know, maybe it's from his expertise about the Titanic or something that he was able to do, you know, huge numbers. But $1.5 billion from that does seem very far-fetched, you know. Yeah, and then when you try to figure out what other businesses he had, and it's like premier exhibitions, and you know, this is all you get. Yeah. When you try to find different articles and research it, you don't get much. So it's pretty interesting to think that you know. Ultimately, I I, I say they wrote this story for a distraction. 